Einstein's equations of general relativity simply say the following. The Ricci curvature tensor minus one half the metric tensor times the contracted curvature tensor is proportional to the stress energy tensor. All this says that if I start with a star, a black hole, or even a universe, that determines the curvature that surrounds that concentration of matter and energy. But inside these equations, there's a monster. In the extreme gravity of the core of a black hole, Einstein's equations spiral wildly out of control. After a very long, tedious calculation, I mostly get zeros, but the non-zero term is given as follows. M is the mass of the black hole. R describes the distance from the black hole. Here is the problem. Right there, when R is equal to zero, the point at which physics itself breaks down. So one over R equals one over zero equals infinity. To a mathematician, infinity is simply a number without limit. To a physicist, it's a monstrosity. It means that first of all, gravity is infinite at the center of a black hole, that time stops, and what does that mean? Space makes no sense. It means the collapse of everything we know about the physical universe. In the real world, there's no such thing as infinity. Therefore, there is a fundamental flaw in the formulation of Einstein's theory. According to Einstein, then, all the mass of the black hole is contained within an infinitely small point that takes up precisely no space at all. This impossible object of infinite density and infinite gravity is called the singularity. You might wonder why we'd want to apply quantum mechanics to something as large as a massive black hole. When quantum mechanics deals with very small. And that's because ultimately, at the heart of a large black hole, is a singularity. Whatever a singularity really is, one thing we do know is it must be very, very small. It seems quite likely that in order to really understand what goes on inside a black hole, we will need quantum mechanics. That the final story of how a black hole works and what happens at the singularity can only be understood when quantum mechanics is included. This subatomic world quantum mechanics describes is nothing like the world we experience. Quantum mechanics tells us how the world works at a fundamental level. And it is stranger than you can imagine. In the quantum world, the mere act of observing changes what you see. You can't say where something is, only where it's likely to be. And anything that is possible, no matter how unlikely, happens all the time. All of our notions about how things behave change. For example, an object has a known location, I'm here, you're there, but at a quantum mechanical scale, objects can be in many different places at the same time, literally. Yet strange as quantum mechanics is, theorists believe the world it describes is the true nature of reality. Quantum mechanics is so weird it may sound like science fiction. But it's not science fiction, it's science fact. And it's done better than any other idea in physics. It allows us to make the best predictions we've ever made. So like it or not, it describes the world. But there's one thing quantum mechanics can't describe. Gravity. And it's not normally a problem because atoms are so light, the effect of gravity is irrelevant. Most of the time, quantum mechanics and gravity leave each other in peace. But there's one arena in which they're both important. 
And that arena is when things are both very small and the force of gravity is very large. And that's what happens inside a black hole. The singularity at the heart of a black hole is both astronomically heavy and infinitesimally small. To understand it, quantum mechanics alone wasn't enough. It needed to be extended to describe gravity, a theory called quantum gravity. When physicists tried to combine the two theories, they encountered a familiar problem. I insert this into the probability that gravity will move from one point to another point. When I actually do this calculation, I get yet another integral. And when you do this integral, you get something which makes no sense whatsoever. An infinity. Total nonsense. In fact, you get an infinite sequence of infinities, infinitely worse than the divergences of Einstein's original theory. This is a nightmare beyond comprehension. The search for a theory of quantum gravity had fallen apart because quantum mechanics and general relativity proved to be totally incompatible. I think the most embarrassing problem we have in theoretical physics is that we have these two different theories which won't talk to each other. We have Einstein's theory of gravity, which beautifully describes the very big and the very fast. And then we have quantum physics, which very successfully describes the very small. And yet, clearly nature has one unique way of operating. It's not schizophrenic. And we humans just don't seem to be able to find that way.